So it's been quite a long wait to come back here, unwrapping the transmission. A little over a month and a half, and we're going to continue where we left off all the gears already, as you guys saw in our last video. And we're going to start off going outside, and we're going to show you how to remove the axle seals. We're only going to do one because it's the same process on both sides, so let's get to that. So we're going to let Robbie show you guys how to do this. Um, as you can see, we've got our seal. And what we discovered is the puller kind of helps, but it needs some uh, influence with a screwdriver. So, And our trusty hammer. Yes. So we're going to go ahead and show you that. All your weight on that side. <clears throat> See? It goes right through. It's lifting it pretty good, though. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Let me find that. <laughs> All right, now I gotta pull this one out. Yeah? Yeah. All right, I still need your weight. Hold on, I have to grab that. Push towards me. Yeah, it's not gonna budge. Maybe. Gosh. It's just I want to pry it here so I don't damage anything here. I think I like, popped up like two millimeters when I did that too. I think that's the way to get this is gentle prying. Now, if you guys ever try this, and you're using a pry tool, pry tool, remember that, pry tool, try not to let it touch the part that seals the transmission just because you don't want to have any gasket issues when you go to reseal it. And then if you just go back and forth, it does take some time, but better safe than sorry. Ta-da. There it goes. Hammer not needed. And we already found out that we do not need to replace this shim. So we just get to put in the, the, the new, new ones one. after we clean it up. Something that you will notice when you remove these is this is the original design. And it's got a metal housing on the entire outside of it. And if you search on the forums, a lot of people with this type of seal had um, axle seal leaking um, coming out of the transmission. So when you get the new seal, it's more of a rubber base. As you can see, it's rubber, and then there's a little metal to kind of conform it to prevent the leaking. So when you put it in, it's just going to be completely flush. Before, it had a nice lip to stop it. This time, we are using our handy-dandy uh, bearing installer, and it's we got the right size, so it'll just be flush when it does that. And Robbie's going to show us how to put this in. When you do put it on, try and keep it as straight as possible. Don't give it hard wax, just take your time with it. Let it slowly seat. And then, you know, every few little taps, just take a look at it, make sure it's nice and straight. It's a little crooked. Now I see on this side, it's going in a little sooner. So I wanna, you know, you can just pivot it a little just to add a little bit more force on the opposite end. I think that's good. That's good. It's a little lower on this side, just ever so slightly. Well, when the axle goes in too, it's going to push it in a little bit. Mm -hmm. So, all right. There's one. Mm. And uh, rinse, repeat on the other side. So, on that last one that we just did, something you guys didn't see because we realized it was we had to remove the race for the new bearing of the LSD. So, we went ahead and did that. This is the second one. Um, we've done that off camera. And just to show you, it's completely bare. So, we're going to have to put in the new race um, and then the seal on the other one so don't forget to do that otherwise you're gonna probably have to break a seal to uh, get around that or come up with some ingenious way luckily uh, because there's a thickness difference we were able to get a screwdriver in there and pop it out without any issue so we should put some lube on this we could also put in the freezer too <laughs> you in the freezer what's your deal man? it would shrink it man and then just pop in
No bueno. He just wants to go in crooked. Lube. 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 So I can tell like right now it's not. That's alright. Let's see. The camera's gonna shake. Hang on, hang on. Hang on. It sort of went in. There we go. Hard? Yep. It's a little crooked now. Which way? Here, I got an idea. Take that off. No, take it off. <laughs> Try to make it straight. Yeah, that's straight now. <laughs> Oh, beautiful. <laughs> Two smacks. <laughs> yep, that's in. All right, does it have... Yeah, I think it needs to go in all the way. All the way in? Yeah, so uh, this is where we use our tapered, because we have a whole bunch of these to go in properly. All right, so we got it nice and flush, but it does have a few more millimeters to go. We did get a 63 millimeter bearing pusher. So it is tapered and it's small enough to where it'll fit, but not touch the outer side. So it'll be able to go uh, smooth in. All right, so now we uh, install the second one, which you guys don't have to see. You already saw us install that. So one goes right here. we'll get to uh, putting all the gears back together for you guys. So there's a couple different ways you can measure the clearances of your differential. The way I did it to make sure everything was correctly was I used a micrometer and I literally measured everything. I measured the shims, I measured the bearings, I measured the distance on it of the new one and the old one and everything was within 0 .002 of a thousandth. So there's no shim that is that different. Um, and that's how I did the measurements. Again, there are there's a Ford spec way to do it, but again, if you're measuring everything and everything is that close, there's not gonna be an issue. Um, again, we'll find out though, when uh, we drive it around to see if there's any excessive noise other than the normal differential noise. But um, just wanted to let you guys know that. So now we're gonna attach the ring gear, which is 50 Newton meters of torque for the first setting. But as you're putting it on, you have to do everything one turn at a time. And then at the very end, the second stage is a 90 degree turn, which we're gonna show you. So what we're gonna do, I'm sitting right now so you guys can see me, but we're going to attach the ring gear now to the differential. And we tested this torquing method with the old one. Um, there's no Loctite used, so these bolts are torqued to yield, so you get a whole new set when you get the Ford Performance Kit or the Mountain Kit like I ordered. Something interesting, though, that we noticed is it needs to, and this is why it's one turn at a time, the new ring gear doesn't fit quite over the wave track. It seems to be like a press fit kind of thing. So the bolts do reach and with each turn, it's gonna pull it closer and closer and closer until it's nice and flush like the original unit. When we do tighten it down for the 90, deg for the 90 degrees um, for the last stage, we are gonna have to put it in a vise and we're gonna use some uh, protective cloth to uh, go around so no damage is done to uh, our new setup as we were experimenting before with the old setup or the open diff. So that's what we're gonna be doing right now, so. Getting each bolt just a little bit threaded. So I'm just gonna finger tight them right now so they're all the same tensioned. And then we're gonna tighten it all up one bolt at a time one turn at a time which it seems that with each little tighten it kind of brings it up honestly one turn just turn it around keep your thumb on that one one turn one turn so using three hands we're gonna 
That was one turn. It didn't work. No. It's still pulling the thing up, but again, we're going to do this one turn at a time. Do it evenly. Oh yeah. Sorry, camera. There's that. Oh yeah. Hey, I can feel the bolt. That's good. I got just the tip. That's all you need. Just the tip. And that causes enough problems as it is, man. Stop moving it. I can't remember which one was the first one we started with. Oh, I think we're, yeah, we're finally getting to the torque spot. So just going to tighten these up enough now because we're not pulling the ring gear up. And then we're going to put it in the vise carefully. And we're going to torque these bad boys. All right, let's put this thing in a vise. And as you can see here, now it's nice and flush. So it was time consuming, but we did get it in properly. Just be patient with it. So what we did right now is we added some uh, shop rags, taped them on. We're gonna tighten this down. That's to prevent any scoring, as well as we're gonna have one of us holding this while we tighten. So here we go. First round of uh, 50 Newton meters. One. Two. Can't get that one. Good to know. All right, so that's stage one. We're gonna do stage two now. It's not gonna be as accurate unless you have a torque wrench that does angles, like I had saw uh, at Dead Hook Motorsports. I keep bringing them up. We're gonna be doing this uh, eyeballing roughly our 90 degrees, so you'll get to see that. I'm gonna try and get this at the topmost angle. That's his topmost, so you want to get it. And then it's roughly going to be down here slightly. So here we go. First 90 degree, or hopefully this does not move. Oh my God. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hang on. We're fine. Let's tighten it just a little bit. There we go. Oh my gosh. Yeah, 90 degrees isn't as easy as you guys think. That's about 30. <laughs> Forty-five. It's moving. I want to check it. So this one, we've done about forty-five. 45. So we got I just want to check the. Make sure there's no scoring. We're good. We're good. Okay. Still that one. Add another piece of rag. That's fine. I'm just gonna tighten the crap out of it. Okay. Ah, okay. So back to our 45. Let's see if we get the other 45 degrees. Oh my gosh. You know, it might be the angle of where this bolt is at that I'm trying that's moving it so much. So stop. I can turn it from here. Just hold, hold, hold this because we don't want it to move. So. Uh, somewhere around there. Yeah. That good? I'm I'm holding the, the the thing so you can you can wrench on it. Oh, camera catch, always happens. Oh. Mm -mm. Back to our regularly scheduled program. All right. So I need another forty-five degrees. Let's see how this works. Got it! Oh my gosh! Where did he go? One! Take two on the second bolt. Oh my flipping gosh. And you wanted to go to the There we go! There's two! Oh. Alright, again, eyeballing. Here goes 90 degrees for number three. This one's a little easier. There we go. Two, one. Oh gosh, it is rotating. <laughs> oh wow, that's loose. I told you it popped. <clears throat> oh, 
continue on. A little further. There, that's good. 90 degrees. There's four. This is already at 45, so I'll do two 45 degree turns on this one. <laughs> There's one 45 no, a degree further, turn. A little further. Okay, now do it again. That sucks. That's good. There's 90. <sighs> Realize. Five. You're complaining about that. <laughs> I'm holding this and a whole bench. <laughs> Don't give me- <laughs> this sucks! <laughs> Make sure you skip arm day at the gym when you do this. <laughs> For a week. It just feels like it's gonna break. If you break one, I'm gonna beat your ass. Oh, I'm gonna cry. After you're done crying, I'm gonna beat your ass. <clears throat> There. Oh. 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 Six. Only four more to go. We're going to take a break. Oh. We'll be back. <laughs>